Hi everyone, I'm T.A. Barron. Welcome back to my writing room. I am happy now to read to you another chapter from Tree Girl. Let's do chapter six. In the days after their encounter in the glade, Anna often wondered about that strange green-eyed bear. He'd play with me, Burl. I'm sure he would. She stood in the shadow of the tree one morning, not long after the master had left for the day's fishing. Her toes tapped against the mossy roots, and mayhaps he'd be my friend. The scraggly old fur shrugged. Some needles fell and sprinkled her hair. We could run together, hide from each other, aye, and climb some trees. More needles. She looked down at the blackened skillet in her hand, which she'd brought outside to wash in the sea. It still smelled of that morning's breakfast, smoked herring and seaweed cakes. She grinned, knowing that was a breakfast the bear might have loved, although he'd probably rather just have some fresh berries. Aye, big ripe ones from somewhere in the forest. Her mouth turned down, somewhere in the forest. <sighs> Finding the bear would mean going back there again, deeper than before probably, and playing with him would mean going deeper still, right into the arms of the ghouls. She shook her head and leaned against old Burl. Oh, I guess it isn't easy to find a friend. Her jaw quivered. Or a mother. She looked up into the branches. What really happened to her, Burl? And to me? Where was I born? Did she just bring me into the forest for some reason? Or did I just drop to the ground one day like one of your needles? Anna sighed. Nobody could tell her those things. Nobody but the high willow. And she couldn't go there to find out, not with all those ghouls in the way. <sighs> she patted the fur's trunk, then walked down to the water's edge. A cool breeze lifted off the water and tousled her hair. Eagle hopped on the beach beside her, always on the watch for a surprise attack from a starfish or an oyster shell. His feet left a thin trail of prints in the sand. She knelt on the beach at the highest reach of the tide. With the next wave hissing and sloshing, she dipped in the skillet and scrubbed with a small bit of sponge. Quit your dreaming, she scolded herself. You don't have a mother, that's true. But you still have old Burl, and Eagle too, and someone else. Her head turned toward the cottage the little home built long ago by the master. His sturdy work had kept out so many storms and forest ghouls. Even on the one night each summer when he rowed out to the farthest reef and slept on his boat and ghouls had come to the cottage and rattled the door, she had been safe, thanks to him. She stood and shook off the skillet. I, someone else, a person like me, Anna drew a deep breath. He's not spry enough to climb trees, but he speaks my own language, and he lives right here. She walked back to the cottage with a skillet and a plan. Over the next few weeks, spring burst into bloom around the cottage. Leaves and vines, needles and flowers sprouted from the trees at the forest edge. Berries dotted the brambles, and tiny blue flowers as bright as periwinkle shells popped through the sand. Anna's garden looked more leafy by the day, almost a forest itself. On top of that, water birds arrived, all kinds from all directions. Egrets, gulls, cormorants, ducks, pelicans, and even a huge stiff-legged crane landed right on the beach. All day long, they strutted down the shore, nibbling at minnows in the tide pools and slapping the air with their wings. From sunrise to sunset, they spluttered and squawked and honked at each other, and also at Eagle, 
who marched among them like a dwarf among giants. But the greatest change of all happened inside the cottage. It started when Anna made a new pillow for the master, putting the downy feathers she'd found on the beach into a sack of woven grass. And it kept happening when she changed the straw in their sleeping pallets, hung onion and garlic from the main post, cleaned out the hearth, and fixed those driftwood chairs. She patched up the sealskin that held their fresh water and gathered fresh mint from the stream that flowed out of the forest. She even found a butterfly's cocoon and draped it on the shutter. At first, the old man didn't seem to notice or say anything if he did. But slowly, Anna began to sense a change in him. He seemed to curse a little bit less in the evenings and to linger at the cottage a little bit longer in the mornings. He asked her to sing more and more, which she gladly did. Sometimes he gave her the bigger portion of fish or helped her chop scallops for sea broth. And once, to Anna's complete surprise, he squeezed her shoulder gently before going out the door. The cocoon opened. A pink-striped lady of the tides climbed out with wings all wet and crumpled like newly sprouted ferns. And for several days, that butterfly flitted around the room. It darted over Eagle's head, ignoring all the whistles, and sipped at Anna's bowl of flowers. Once it even landed on the master's ear and then laughed right out loud, shook the cottage. Then came a day when the master stayed home from fishing to fix the rotten planks in his boat. Anna worked alongside him. While she gathered the sap from old Burl's bark and boiled it till soft, he chopped new slats of driftwood with his axe. Then together they fit the wood into the hull and worked the sticky sap all around, plugging any gaps they could find. This was Anna's favorite part. Oh, how she loved the feel of the wood. Even after years of being worn and beaten by the sea, its grain still ran true. And she wondered if each different wood had a special grain of its own, the way different people have footprints of their own. The old man looked up from the hull. Sing to me, would you now? And so she smiled, and she sang... Wood on the water, boat on the waves, gray gulls a soaring high, I am at sea, salt on my tongue, wind on my brow, endless horizons here, now I am free. When she finished, she ran her fingers along the newly fitted plank. It's good to work with you, master. I. He replied without looking up from the hull. He blew a puff of greenish smoke from his pipe. One day, mayhaps, you'll come fishing with me. You can haul the nets if you like. Anna started. He'd never before offered to take her along in the boat. Oh, I do like, I do! She ran to his side and hugged his neck. Please let me come. All right, girl, when you be just a little bit older. She released him and skipped back to her end of the boat. She danced a pair of perfect twirls on the beach, spraying sand against the hull. And another twirl after that, just for good measure. Then, before starting back to work, she smiled at the master. You're a much better friend than that bear could ever be. The old man froze. He dropped his chunk of sap and stared at her, his face suddenly as hard as his coral pipe. Did you say a bear? Meekly, she nodded. His eyes flashed. Have you been going into the forest while I be out to sea? Tell me the truth, girl. Aye, but, but, but it was just none of your excuses. He slammed his hand against the boat. Or your lies. I've told you 10,000 times what could happen in there. Do you think I want to come home someday and find your carcass in a tree? No, no. A sob bubbled up from her throat. I don't, I mean, it's not. Hush, you full-brained girl. You'll be my own death, too. He grabbed a handful of sand and threw it at her. 
Now get back inside where you belong. Anna stumbled, sobbing, back to the cottage. She had ruined everything, everything. She slammed the door hard. The cottage now seemed so bare, so empty, for it lacked what she so much wanted. And what was so wrong about wanting a friend? The master didn't understand, didn't care. She knew now that the master could never really be her friend, but that didn't have to stop her from finding someone else. She wiped her cheeks with clenched fists. I'm going to find that bear again, she declared. I, wherever I must look, I will find him, back to the glade or to the trees beyond. Or even, she glanced over her shoulder at the open window, the high willow. <laughs>